Some rare photographs of the city of Jerusalem, some of the earliest ever taken, have turned up in Minnesota, taken in the 1850s by Jerusalem's first professional photographer. The images give a glimpse of the holy city as it looked for nearly six centuries. Along comes the invention of uh, a solution, a light sensitive solution that could be put on glass. Uh, and that kind of gave birth to the whole wet plate process, which is what Dennis uh, uh, learned to do in Jerusalem. And uh, that was kind of an interesting process, albeit a bit difficult. Wherever Dennis went to make his photographs, he had to take uh, literally hundreds of pounds of glass with him. If he used two different size cameras, he needed two different size sheets of glass. Uh, normally, the process would be simply to, to dip this glass in this collodion solution, uh, put it in a film holder in a dark tent, uh, rush over, put it in the camera, and before it dried, pull off the cover, make the exposure, rush over to your, your uh, tent and see what you got. From my standpoint of view, it must have been pretty exciting because he was really kind of an adventurer. Um, to learn all of this, the photochemistry, the mechanical aspects of the camera, Dennis almost had to go to school. It, uh, uh, and, and do a lot of practice. He eventually uh, uh, sort of perfected his technique and found out that he could make a few bucks from tourists, uh, developed a bit of a reputation, and then was hired by uh, 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 Pilati to do uh, surveys of, uh, of Jerusalem. The glass plate negatives are extraordinary. Glass is always liquid and liquid is always in motion, and it has no grain. So that virtually you can enlarge what a print from a glass plate negative almost infinitely. I didn't have enough money to make negatives and individual prints, and so I decided to videotape the photographs and as I was videotaping them, on one occasion, I happened to hit the brightness control. And I went into a window. I zoomed into a black window and found shadowy figures inside the room. I entered into the room. Now, it wasn't that clear, but I could see that there were white shadowy figures in there. I switched the lens and looked at a doorway that was blazing in the noonday sun, it was white, 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 white. And by darkening it, I found graffiti. I found that it was carved into. And I suddenly realized we could physically excavate in the light rays that had been captured in these 19th century photographs. fascinating about Dennis, uh, lots of things, but one of them was um, seeing early photographs of, um, of Jerusalem and of the Holy Land, which uh, not only had I not seen before, but of places that were not photographed by anyone else. What um, Dennis has documented in his photographs is only in part still extant or still standing. Um, many of the uh, objects that he documented in his photographs on have been um, restored, renovated, majorly renovated, or even rebuilt since those photographs were taken up. Of course, excluding the major monuments such as the Dome of the Rock and, and the obvious ones. And, Dennis's photographs emerge today as a, an excellent documentation, accurate documentation of what was there prior to these renovations. I found within Dennis and 
also other photographs of the period, um, places that I had heard my, my parents and my grandfather, my grandparents talk about, and I, I didn't know where they were, you know, 19th century hotels, for example. My, one of my uncles used to tell me that it's right outside Jaffa Gate. His father, my grandfather, it used to take him once a month to uh, have his tarpush, his fez. My grandfather, under the Turks, all, everyone in my family, they were Turkish citizens, they all wore the uh, tarbush, I have photographs of them in it, and they used to be right inside Jaffa Gate. There used to be a place where you could get your tarbush cleaned and ironed. So once a month they would go there, and then they would have ice cream on the balcony of the Faust Hotel. So suddenly, you know, there is the Faust Hotel, there is the other hotel where the shop was, um, where the tarbush was was uh, ironed. So it, for me, it makes it very personal. But I think for other people too. Uh, Jerusalem has so much meaning for so many people, really, for the Jews, uh, uh, for such the a large part of the world with, with and Muslims Christians. And, and Christians and Jews, much too delicate that a diplomatic issue I think the photographs speak to people. Campaign. Dennis, we discovered, was not alone. He was hired by a brilliant engineer from northern Italy, whose name was Ermite Pierotti, who in turn was hired by a very dedicated governor, Suraya Pasha, who is sent to Jerusalem right after the Crimean War, when the Empire of Turkey found itself very, very alone and very endangered by the Russian bear and, and realized they needed friends. And he was sent to Jerusalem to make friends. Right away, he decided he didn't want anything to collapse, anything to fall down. And so he hired uh, Ermite Pierotti to go and check the walls, and particularly the walls of the holy places, and make sure they were strong and not going to fall down on his watch. And Pierotti brilliantly went to the first resident photographer of Jerusalem, Mendel Dinnis, Mendel John Dinnis, and he said, please come around with me and take photographs. And so in the late 1850s, you had a governor who was very responsible, a, an engineer who was very careful, and a very brilliant young photographer working together to save the holy city. Now what's very important is the governor comes from a Muslim family, the engineer comes from a Christian family, and the photographer comes from a Jewish family.